Hello, my name is Peter Raymer, and today we're going to talk about how to write a display method in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. Um, you've probably seen in past videos or are familiar with how to display data on a form. Um, typically, you have a data source, you have a grid, and on that grid, you have different controls, and those controls are tied to the data source via data source property and a data field to specify which field on the data source you want to show. Then it will show records um, from this data source's underlying table. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use a display method. A display method allows us to write code um, to uh, select data from different tables, whether it be the current um, table or some other related table. It allows us to run X++ code, um, such as concatenating fields or um, summing fields or you name it. And eventually we get a single value to return to the user and that can be displayed in the column. And we can run that calculation on every single record um, to display a value. So let me give you an example and it'll make more sense. So I have this RSM vehicle form. On it, you can specify a vehicle ID, a type, a make, and a model. Well, um, let's pretend that I would like to concatenate the make and the model together and show it in a single field. Typically, you cannot show um, using data fields any data that's not explicitly stored in a field. It's only meant for showing exactly what the data is in the field. But with display methods, um, we can do whatever we want. We can run code to come up with a new value. So let me show you a quick example. I'm just going to say my Jeep is my ID. Um, I'll set the vehicle ID to a car. I'm going to set my make to a Jeep. And then you'll notice right away, as soon as I've done that, this display method column that I've added is going to show the Jeep um, plus the model. I haven't selected the model yet, so it won't show me that component. Now I can select the model, and I've set up this display method to show make slash or space model. And so, you know, I can do that again with some other record that I have on here. Um, and again, it's going to combine um, these two different values uh, th that I'm showing here. So I can do a Honda Civic here, and it shows me these two values. So let me look at the code and show you how that's done. The place we want to add a display method is on the table. Um, so if we go to the table and we expand methods and we right click we can say new method um, to create a new method, um, or we can right click on the table object to, uh, and select view code to bring up the code editor window. I've already added this display method um, to save time so you can see what it looks like. Really a display method is like any other method. There's really just two things to keep in mind. You must use this keyword display in the method definition. This tells the system that this method can be used on a form. Um, without this, um, it's just a regular old method that will return a value, but you can't use it on a form, uh, on a control on a form. Um, so here I've created a method. I've called it display, make, and model. I've set the return type to be an EDT. Um, and in this case, I'm using the this keyword to select the current record, and I'm getting the make ID out of the current record. I'm concatenating it with a space, and then I'm concatenating the model ID afterwards. I'm assigning it to a local variable, but I don't need to do that. Um, and then I'm returning this um, value um, to the calling program. And in this case, the return value will display on the screen. Okay, um, there's a couple more things that I wanted to bring up about display methods that are important. It's really important that you always use an extended data type um, as your return type on a display method. This gives us multiple things. Um, it controls the length of 
um, a string if we're returning a string, but it also tells the system what type of data type um, we're returning. Is it an underlying string? Is it an integer? Is it a real? Is it an enum? Um, this extended data type uh, tells the system what type of control to, to create on the form. Um, the other thing it does is extended data types have label properties. And so when you set the label property on this extended data type, that is what's going to cause um, and show right here. If you didn't have a label on your extended data type, you wouldn't have um, text here or the, the, uh, the text would um, not be correct. Um, so it's really important that whenever you use a display method, you um, return using an extended data type and that extended data type has a label on it. One of the really cool things that we can do once we've created um, our display methods is we actually can use them in field groups just the same um, as uh, we would a data field. So if I go back to our table, um, I've got all these fields on my form and I've created a field group named all and I've actually dragged these different fields into this field group. One of, one of the great things though is I can actually take these display methods and drag them into a field group as well. And if you're familiar with field groups, they're used on a form. I'll show you that in just a second. If you've got a method that is not um, a display method and does not have that display keyword, you won't be able to add it um, to your field group. Okay, so if I go back to the form designer, I want to show you what it looks like to hook up a display method to a control on a form. In this case, I've just added it, um, the display method to my field group. I've set the field group um, on the properties on my grid here. Um, and then I don't need to do anything else. I've set the data source and the data group. And then the system automatically looks at the base type of my extended data type. Um, and it creates the proper grid control um, for me. So if I was using a no yes um, enum, this would create a checkbox control for me. If I was using another enum with more than two values, it would create a combo box control um, or an integer or real, um, whatever my base type is. So that's really nice about display methods that we can use them in field groups as well. Um, if you don't have a field group, you can still use a display method. You would just create your new control on your grid. You would then select the control and then the two important properties to set are the data source and the data method. So I'll scroll up and show you what that looks like. The data source is set here, and then the data method is set to the name of your display method. So I have one display method called display model description, and I have another display method um, that's gonna display the make and model. Let's look at another example. So if I go over to the code that's on the table, um, we can add another display method. Um, that display method I'm calling display model is serviceable. Um, so here I'm declaring a table buffer of type RSM model. I'm selecting the first model in this record um, that has the same model ID as the current record. So I get that current records model ID by using the ver the value this dot model ID. And I'm using that to look up a record in the RSM model table. Once I found that related record, I can actually look up a value. In this case, I'm looking up um, a yes, no value. Is this a serviceable uh, model? And I'm returning that back to the screen. So it's important to understand that display methods can be used um, to run logic, like concatenating fields or running if statements or anything else, but they also can be used um, to run select statements and select data from a related record that you may not have as a data source on the current form. Um, on this current form, we only have this RSM vehicle data source. We could add the RSM model 
data source as a second data source and join in um, that data source and then we'd be able to drag any fields on that data source over to this grid but using a display method um, we can actually still show those values um, even though it's not using a data field but that leads me to a couple of caveats um, some disclaimers about using display methods display methods have a performance impact because essentially what they are doing is they are running that display method for every single record shown on the grid that you're seeing. Fortunately, it's not running that method for every single record in the table. It only shows, it only runs the method for every control that is shown to the front end user. Um, so there is a performance impact. You don't want your display method to have, um, you know, logic that's going to take a long time to run because that's going to make your form run really slow. Um, another important factor to know is that you can't use um, filter logic on a display method. So on a normal field, I'm allowed to click these drop downs at the top, um, set up a filter, type something in, hit apply, and the system's gonna search through the whole table and only provide records that match that, that value that I've typed in. With display methods, I can't do that. And the reason for that is that display methods, um, again, are only calculating the resulting value that we see for the records that we see. So if I have a table with millions of records, it's not gonna go through every single record and calculate a value and then compare that against a filter value that you've typed in. That would just run way, way too slow. So instead, um, the functionality is disabled. We can not actually filter on display methods. So if you have a requirement that you need to be able to filter the column, you shouldn't use a display method and you should figure out if you can either join in a second data source on your form or you may need to take um, the values that you have and make sure that they're saved to a field on a table so that you can join in that data source. Here you can see this is serviceable. So I this is also a display method. I am showing a display method um, from this model field on this record. So right now I can see my Honda Accord record has is serviceable and that's because the model on this one has um, this flag checked, whereas other models um, don't have that value set. If I uh, move over to our model form and refresh this form, I can see only the Honda has this one set. Um, again, I could join in this data source, but I thought I'd show you this example. Let's look at a couple other examples of how you might use um, a uh, display method. Here's one from the customer table. So um, if you want to know what is the primary address for your customer, uh, Microsoft has created this display method called address and it's going to return a full address string um, but in order to get this address string this is not stored on the customer record it actually has to go out to join to several other tables um, to get the primary address and to get this value so this is an, a good use of a display method we could also look at sales line um, on the sales line table um, you, here is a display method that gets the item name. So the item name is not um, stored on the sales line. That wouldn't be a very good idea. It's uh, stored on the item master, um, but the item ID is stored on the sales line. So using this display method, um, the sales line can use its item ID to go out and get the invent table, which is the item master table. And then it can call another method on that to actually get the item name. And in this case, if you actually look at the code for the item name, um, it runs some complex logic to decide um, what do I actually show you? Do I um, show you just the product name or if we pass in a size, color, config style, um, should I also include um, product variant information? So display methods can be really powerful um, to run logic and come up with uh, value to display to the screen.
Okay, um, the last thing that I wanted to kind of explain or the last couple of things are um, where should you put your display methods? You always wanna put your display methods, um, or I should say almost always, on the table itself. Um, so under methods here. You can add display methods to uh, forms, like form methods or form data source methods. Um, and that is okay, um, but that display method will only be accessible to that form. No other developer will be able to use your display method. So very often you wanna write your display methods on the table itself so that any form that's gonna use this table could reuse um, this display method logic that you've written. The last thing that I want to cover is I've explained that display methods have a performance impact and that they can be slow because they're running um, code for every line that it's being shown. Um, one thing you can do to improve the performance is you can actually cache display methods. Uh, by default, the display methods are not cached by the system. Um, so what you can do is on a form, you can override the admit method on either the form or the form's data source. In this case, I'm looking at the cus table form and I'm looking at the data source for cus table. And on the init of this data source, um, Microsoft has added this code. Um, the way they've added it is the name of the data source underscore DS to get the full data source object and then they call this method cache add method that's on every data source. And then what you need to pass in is the name of your display method that you would like to cache. In this case, we're gonna use a global function called table method string to get this display method. And that takes two parameters, the name of the table and the name of um, the method that you have. Um, and then you pass that into cache add method. This will make your display method run um, a lot faster and make sure that your uh, form is performing well. Okay, I know that was a lot. Um, kind of in summary, display methods are really powerful. They let us run code to display values instead of just have display value, or instead of just displaying values that are on a field on a table. That's really useful, but there's some important caveats. Um, the main way you use them, again, is to set the data source on a control and set the data method field instead of the data field. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you like the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.